Μάρκα Γιώκο είναι η επιμελήτρια του Ιαπωνικού Περιπτέρου φέτος. Είναι ε, επιμελήτρια εκθέσεων η κυρία Καγιώκο και έχει μάλιστα και μια ελληνική εμπειρία για την οποία θα μας ε, μιλήσει αμέσως τώρα. Μισ Καγιώκο, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you to, to be here for Greek Architects, the Greek uh, Internet Television service so i would like uh, first of all i'd like to ask you uh, what what is this kind of your greek experience let us say greek experience uh, although i have never been there unfortunately i mean this is my one of my destinations right now the the most recent encounter with greece is this uh, foundation called ecastics uh, initiated by uh, Constantinos Doxiades, and I got to know him in the actually in the research work by Rem Kohlhaas. He was um, researching about Lagos and then the the huge influence, the impact of uh, the Greek architects, uh, mainly I mean led by Doxiades, in the uh, in the process of. Uh, the rapid modernization of yes. the country and then, you know it's not only Lagos but um, after the Second World War the many uh, countries um, in the Eastern Europe for instance in the um, or other developing countries in the world uh, were really uh, indebted to the uh, involvement of uh, the great urban planner uh, from Greece which is Konstantinos Doxiadis um, one another anecdote is that Kenzo Tange, our, one of our masters uh, in modern architecture in Japan, he had a personal relationship with uh, Doxiades. Kenzo Tange. Kenzo Tange, yes. And actually I was digging into the letters that he exchanged and he wrote with many uh, important personalities at the time in the 50s and 70s, uh, 60s. And there were some exchanges, the, the documents, um, with Doxiades. And he actually, Ken, Tange and his wife, visited Greece two times in the 60s to learn what he, well, the Doxiades has many different ideas and, and uh, the ways of doing very impressive researches for developing countries. And Kenzo Tange was very impressed. And he had a huge influence to develop further the Japanese um, urbanization in the latter part of the 60s. So there was a very um, intense exchange between Japan and Greece. Then. So we, we understand that there are also some kind of information about the uh, Ondoxiadis that come from Japan information that comes from, from, from Japan because nowadays there are several researchers in Greece that are working on the personality of Doxiadis. So it's very interesting this information. Yes, I'm very, very looking forward to the, the result of the research. Okay, so uh, please um, speak to us about uh, the um, Japan Pavilion of this year. Yes. Uh, we first of all tried to respond to the, well, I should say mandate or suggestion, uh, proposal from the director, which is to research about 100 years modernization, the process of modernization and its impact on architecture in the country. So we thought it was a very interesting proposal and this was an uh, unheard of, unprecedented theme, uh, even in his architectural history in Japan. So we immediately responded, yes, let's do it. And our proposal was accepted. And immediately I formed a group of historians, architecture historians, but also economists, uh, and also uh, other researchers and editors, uh, even movie makers. Uh, actually, we, are, we, we have made one film based, uh, for the exhibition. Uh, so that we have a, a very uh, a kind of uh, diverse viewpoint about this century. Now, in the century, we uh, try to find what is the focus point for Japan that is most crucial uh, as a process of modernization. Then we concluded that, okay, well, Japan is now famous for uh, metabolism and Kenzo Tange. They, these are the icons. But they do not really represent the whole Japanese modern architecture, of course. In the 70s, as you may know, uh, there was a new wave of architecture 
um, which are uh, very thoroughly represented here. But unfortunately, uh, towards the 70s and early, uh, 80s, there was, um, well, I mean, of course, there was a, a merit to it, but there was a wave of mo postmodernism. Of course. So yeah, these new waves in Japan were kind of uh, enveloped under the label of postmodernism. And then after a certain time, they disappeared. It was the famous bubble period. Yeah, the then. bubble period. Yes. And then so like, okay, well, things kind of drastically changed then. And then the, the previous waves have tied it away. Of course. And now it's uh, out of our memory. Okay. So we thought, well, these people were still alive. And this is a very good moment to go back to them and to get the real stories, um, activate the memory and also their actions and the true stories, which were not necessarily documented. So, and so that we have, once and for all, we have the, the real story of what actually happened in the 70s to um, correctly to understand um, you know, the, what um, had disappeared as a victim of postmodernism. Yes. Now it, we, yes. It was the post Olympic Games period. Yes. Uh, with some uh, masterpieces like Kurokawa's uh, yes. um, uh, Tower in Tokyo, yes. some of uh, the works by Kenzo yes. Tange. Yes. So there was a period where architects were very active and very successful to symbolize the nation yes. as an um, as a emerging kind of presence in the world. But after the 70s, um, the time was not. The, the, the situation changed. Okay, uh, so what, what kind of presen presentation did you did you activate here in, uh, in the Japanese pavilion? Yes, uh, for instance, the young architects then uh, who were who had no work and there was oil crisis. One of the architects called Ishiyama um, started to have a thorough research of what's happening in the market of prefabricated housing, in uh, with a view to. Uh, allowing everyone to afford a good house yes. on a reasonable price, but it's not happening. So why can, actu can, can architects do something positive to it? So he learned the, the, the market system. He actually got into the business of trading yes. prefabricated houses from the States. He actually created a system of distributing the uh, architecturally designed parts for prefabricated houses, and then he developed uh, the, he, his own series of houses, all as an experiment. And this is a very bold action to for an architect to take. Uh -huh. Very risky too. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, so, the, the, uh, the, uh, how do you do you narrate this uh, this evolution here in the pavilion? Yes, uh, in the 70s, not only architects but historians, artists, and collectors, uh, observers, they all reacted very strongly to the stagnation of economic uh, progress yes. as a nation, and each one tried to live out of this uh, difficult age and questioning the, the, the occupation itself, questioning what is architect from, from the bottom, from scratch, and then redefining the profession of architecture from scratch. And then they went into their own uh, unique actions or uh, rethinking or even doubting themselves and then establishing new ac uh, activity for the profession. Yes. And so we have this, uh, the whole variety of uh, actions recorded by ourselves. And so put, uh, put, uh, and we put them all together at the same time so that you can invite yourself to find out the relationship link among them, themselves. And, then, and also, if you see the real thing, mm -hmm. the, the real material that we archive there, then you actually have this um, kind of moving moment yes. that you are moved, well, hopefully you are touched by it. And then I think the message is clear. I mean, there must be some kind of um, the energy. Uh, and uh, I hope that this communication creates new energy 
for the profession. Okay. Uh, uh, what, uh, what do you think about the actual moment of uh, Japanese architecture? Because, uh, as you know very well, Japanese architecture is v very famous all over the world, very estimated, uh, one of the m best examples of contemporary uh, experience. Uh, what do you think about the actual moment of uh, architecture? Mm. That's a very interesting question. Uh, yes, I do know that Japanese architecture is becoming a kind of icon. Uh, it's uh, highly uh, evaluated in general. And I think young architects are also doing well. They're, they're well publicized and they have lots of interesting works uh, built. But um, the older generations, some of them are represented here, are very frustrated by the current situation because Why? Um, they're, they're, what they're doing is too soft, too comfortable. I mean, they're all in the comfort zone and they don't find real challenge. Real challenge? The, no, no real challenge. Oh. And, well, this is very pleasant, interesting, fun, uh, you know, unique, but yes. there's no challenge. So we can say that not only in Greece there are problems, also in Japan there are I think problems. it's universal and, and I think that's why I think the very particular story of Japan would, should communicate to everybody. Of course, of course. Uh, listen, uh, what do you think about uh, this uh, Kulhas um, Biennale? This is... Um, I, I, from the beginning I felt it was, very strong. it was a very strong statement and very ambitious one too. And I think that everybody was really looking forward to the result. Yesterday I saw the Central Pavilion and I was utterly amazed that, well, it, the, dream, the dreams came true. Yes. And I think that he succeeded in redefining Biennale as a global collaboration for architecture. Yes, but we can say that there is an, a, a kind of con contradiction, if you if you we uh, we want to say this, uh, for the absence of architecture in the Kulhas exhibition. Th this is not a problem. This is not a question. What do, what do you think? Oh, you mean the, the, it's not about architect, but uh, but about, uh, about architecture? Yes. Uh, well, I think that what he means by that is that. There has been too much focus on the signature or personality um, images of the architect, which is not necessarily the same as architecture itself. If he questions about the fundamental of architecture, then it should be about architecture rather than architect. And I think that there has been too much um, of a trend, the strong trend, in just following the, the personalities. The, icon, the icons of the authors who make architecture rather than architecture. Yes, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you much. Very much. Greetings to, to Japan. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. And, uh, yes, I hope you come back to Japan soon. Absolutely, thank you very much. Thank you.